I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And I'm really happy today to introduce to you Troy Jensen, who's come and share your story today. Thank you. Huh? Thank you, yes. Well, I appreciate you coming, and um, you were actually born in the church and raised in the church. And Yeah, I was. Tell us, where were um, you born? Well, I was born in um, American Fork, Utah, um, but was really... Um, our early childhood was in Sandy, um, the Sandy Midvale area. Yeah. Um, that's where our life really, my life began anyway. And, uh, in fact, uh, as we've talked, it's turned out you got, went to Hillcrest and you probably uh -huh. knew my son there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I do know Todd and did know Todd. And <laughs> yeah. I haven't obviously seen him for, talked to him for a while, but yeah, yeah well, the world keeps getting smaller. <laughs> it seems to. <laughs> so tell me about your, you were just, your Folks were active in the church. And yeah, just... um, yeah. My pa uh, my parents um, are very active uh, LDS. They, uh, uh, as long as I could remember, we were faithful. You know, church. Yeah. You know, um, going uh, family and uh, participated in all of the activities and and uh, uh, requirements that the <laughs> church has in order to to you know be a. Good, good upstanding good Mormon, yeah. Baptized at eight, I guess. Yeah, baptized you know. at eight. Did all, uh, you know, yeah. followed the rules for as long <laughs> as I thought I could, anyway. Now, you mentioned your dad went to BYU. He's been a bishop. Uh -huh. and, yeah. And you uh, actually mentioned that they've been on three different uh, senior missions. Yeah, they have. Um, you know, one of my, my mother's lifelong dreams was to uh, be able to serve the church. On a mission, okay. and, um, and she didn't do that. As a obviously, young person. Yeah, yeah, she she uh, did not have the opportunity to do that as a as a younger person, and so um, they've taken that to a. I don't know if they're going for a record or, or something, <laughs> but you know they enjoy doing it, and it's yeah. it's what they enjoy doing, and That's and I'm okay with it. I obviously wish we had a little more time together with them in their. Yeah. you know, later years or what have you, but that's what makes them happy, and, okay. and I'm okay with that. All right. So. so you just do the normal things? You get the priesthood at age 12 and yeah. the Aaronic priesthood? and Yeah, I, uh, we did, did the uh, Aaronic priesthood and, uh, you know, followed that path, uh, you know, through, well, I, I really started uh, kind of thinking my own way, I guess, uh, you know, with uh, spirituality and and religion in general, that really started for me at about 16, 17. Now you were taking seminary. Yeah, but, well, we, I enrolled in seminary. Oh. I, I missed a lot of the were classes. Were you one of those guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't make it. All it was the a time. free period for me. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, I'd actually make it into class, though, so yeah. that when they called, they would say, "Yes, he's been attending." Now you said uh, you were an active scout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Eagle Scout at fourteen, and. Um, and those those you were just times were, were fun. You yeah. Were just expected well, it's just that was that. part of the culture. Part yeah. of the culture is you know you have yeah. all of these, you know, the church activities on Sunday that's kind of centered around, 
Yeah, uh, the church. The church, uh, sure. and then you know the rest of the activities that uh, yeah. you know you do throughout the week in order to keep you close to the church. Yeah. So, or even at the church. So. So you mentioned kind of ha seeing things a little differently at age sixteen, seventeen. Is that doctrinal or just? Well, yeah. I, I guess I was probably like a lot of teenagers. You know, you wanted to kind of feel out the world on your own and and yeah. kind of start developing your own ideas about. Um, you know how you think and how yeah. what makes sense to you. Um, I certainly guess maybe all parents thinker, but, face that too. Yeah. You know, you see children that start going out on their own, so to mm -hmm. speak, and thinking, "Did you have talks with your mom and dad? Were they kind of upset that well, did you quit going to church?" At well, that point? it was it was funny. I I um, I was a little bit of a rebellious youth. I mean, not you know, I I just I don't know that I was atypical or what have you, but I was. Uh, I was certainly rambunctious and, and, you know, energetic, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And so I finished my senior year of high school up in Oregon, oh. actually. Uh, and so that relationship with church and my parents and that dynamic kind of started fading, you know, during that time okay. uh, as I, I lived with my brother okay. in Oregon. And so he wasn't as religious and, and certainly not as demanding. As, as about demanding as, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of when, uh, you know, I was in the position to start thinking for myself and start, you know, questioning, hey, what about these issues and, and you know, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense for me? And, and uh, so that's really kind of where it started. I never really, I never really got the whole Mormon or the Elder S doctrine to where I, you know, I could actually say and know in my heart that I knew that it was true yeah. and... Um, that it was part of me. That never ever happened for me, and, uh, and you, I didn't know if it was me or yeah. what it was. But it was something that, you know, I thought that I was missing somehow. But you did say you bore your testimony a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of part of the deal. That's part of the rules, I guess. It's, and it, they're not. So you were just kind not, of not playing the game, but you were kind of going through the motions yeah, or something. That, huh? Yeah, as a as a what people think, expected. Yeah, as a child, I, and you you grow up, you see these these kids that you know you kind of look up to because they're older and they get to do all these other cool things that yeah. you know you haven't been able to do because you're a younger child and so sooner or later you follow in those footsteps if you follow the you know sure. the path of that they've laid out for you and uh, uh, you know so yeah I mean I guess I I did um, I guess I would say that I uh, spoke in a way that many people would have thought that I was bearing my testimony because that's what I was doing. I was in the testimony meeting talking. Yeah. Uh, but at that point, obviously, well, for me, there was but no... in your heart. There, in my wasn't. heart, there was no real connection. It was just like, hey, I get to be up here talking and I get to tell everybody that I know the church is true and now I'm cool like everybody else. <laughs> Interesting. So, I wonder how many people are kind of... Kind of like that. I don't know if you've had discussions yeah, about that. I, but. I mean, I know a few, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, yeah. it's, they're, they're, out, they're out there for sure. Um, and you end up so. getting married young. Yeah, yeah, I was and married. And were you active after your marriage? Um, no, it was kind of hit and miss. Um, you know, we were, uh, I married my wife, Nicole, when I was 18. And, um, you know, at the time we were scared teenagers sure uh, looking back on it it's the best thing that ever happened to me yeah um, yeah you're still married and yeah she's yeah we're still married that. 28 yeah. years later we were never gonna make it by the way yeah. I mean yeah. it's we were <laughs> way too young and way too naive sure to be able to figure out how was, this works family was yeah. probably upset at the whole it thing. was tough I mean it was it was a tough time for us for sure and so we we did kind of lean on uh, you know not, I guess not lean on, but uh, look to family for some advice and some yeah. help as to, hey, you know, how are we going to navigate this new, you know, chapter of our lives? And uh, we dabbled in and out of um, Mormonism mostly just because that's, what that's you knew. still kind of what we knew. Yeah, right, we yeah. still, we knew that and it was Nicole familiar. Because Nicole was active too, right? Yeah, she was, she's a member of the church, yeah. but you know, their family was never really active, active. Okay. I mean, they kind of dabbled in and out a little bit, um, I guess mostly because that's kind of the environment that they are in. And, yeah. and so, but anyway, we, you know, uh, you know, we took, you know, little stints of, you know, being, 
the Mormon family and going to the church and doing the things. But, you know, again, it just, you know, there was, there was never any real... You just didn't there feel was, like you fit it, in, It wasn't I a guess, connection. Huh? Well, yeah. I, you know, I, it wasn't that I didn't fit in. It was just there wasn't something, there wasn't any, there wasn't any concrete thing that I could, uh, that I could rely on uh, as part of Mormonism that I could, you know, put my hooks into and say, this is my belief, this is who I am. And that never happened with me uh, during Mormonism. And, yeah. and I don't think it's about Mormonism as much as it is the lack of uh, teaching Christianity and about Christ and what, you know, you know, his role is in our life. I think that's probably what was missing is, is the information around Jesus Christ as opposed to information around Joe. Well, I was going to ask you if you, so, if you felt that you had a relationship with Jesus even no, during your youth or... No. no. Uh, the relationship I had with Jesus uh, growing up was uh, we just kept saying in the name of Jesus Pray, Christ at the end of prayers. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's um, Didn't sad. really know who, no, no. who he was or what he was. No, or... uh, no. Because it's just uh, so much of the information uh, that we were given was church or religion related it wasn't yeah. spirituality or christianity related it was more organization organization or, and yeah. church and you know joseph smith and the prophets and that's the information we had and that's what we you know were taught growing you know, up it's, it's funny i went through that process too and i never considered all those things to be organizational yeah the home teaching the temple the tithing attendance on Sabbath day, mm -hmm. the prophet, all, the, all those things are, are so organizational. It's and the yet, system. Yeah. And yet when you go through that process, you're thinking, oh, this is the gospel. This yeah. is church. This, this is, is what this spirituality is. This is what God is wants. And, yeah. and this is what he, uh, yeah. yeah. And I never, you know, I never had that perspective at all. I just naively went through the whole thing. I don't think you have the time to. I really don't. I think the time requirements and what the church asks of its members to commit to the church as far as time doesn't leave a lot of open space for self-reflection and, well, yeah, and, 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 and searching and questioning and well, and you're Maybe preparing not even, lessons, too, yeah. that are just directed to you. You know Correct. exactly what you're yeah. supposed to be studying right. and reading. So I, I think that there's so little time to really go and investigate some of these things on your own that you take the information that's provided and you say, okay, well, that is the truth. These people, why would they be dishonest with me? I mean, yeah. Well, I've so. noticed that even now, all of the church essays and some of the other mm -hmm. materials that are out there in the churches basically telling them don't look mm -hmm. and yeah. don't, don't think beyond what we're telling you. And if you do read anything, just keep it at what we're telling you. Yeah. It, Certainly don't talk about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, well, I wanted to ask, do you, did you ever sense, uh, I hate to use the word guilt, but did you always feel like, gosh, I've fallen short, I'm not being the person that I was expected to be, and, and I know I'm going to be punished for this later, and you just kind of not ignore that, but you just, did you feel guilty for letting your folks down or something? Well, I don't know. I, um, I don't think guilty is is the right word to use because okay. I, I never really felt guilty about it. Okay. Um, it was it was more of uh, for me personally. It was it was seeing in my my mother mostly in my parents um, that sense of I guess sorrow or loss even. You knew they were praying for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that 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 um, you know that I wasn't. Um, even today, they still say that I'm not quite ready to really receive the gift of the gospel, <laughs> and uh, and so it, it's uh, oh, it, it's it's interesting because it's 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 a situation that you know I don't feel like I'm uh, I'm less than or I'm lacking in anything. Uh, the problem is, is that this this kind of cloud of of uh, of what a Mormon life is supposed to look like, um, it's just always over Mormonism, yeah. and and uh, the expectations are to follow these paths, and this is how you do Mormonism, and so little of that is is 
based on your own personal journey with Christ or mm-hmm. with your own spirituality, uh, I just, it, it didn't make any sense to me that there would be so little about, you know, Christianity and the Bible and, and Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's just... It, well, yeah. as you explain it, kind of this overall, this blanket or whatever mm-hmm. that's over us, once we step out just a little bit, then you get all kinds of, well, like you're saying, you don't have the spirit, you're not, yeah. you're probably in Satan's grasp, you're elect and you've, you've been deceived and all those things. Yeah, it's, it's um, anything that doesn't follow kind of the path of Mormonism is no. the devil at work or, yeah. or you know, the, you know, uh, just wrong information that's trying to keep you away from becoming, you know, yeah. one of the supreme, you know, members of the church and yeah. be able to go on and do all the church yeah. stuff. Make it to the celestial yeah. kingdom. Yeah, get you, to you the said you show. had a good relationship with your dad as far as talking about things. Yeah. Is, uh, I guess he's, how have those gone? <laughs> what have well, you talked about um, over the years? My parents are wonderful people. I yeah. mean, they really are. I mean, they're, um, they would do anything for anybody. Um, I think if we had more people like my parents in this world, we'd be in a lot better place. That's um, neat to say. Uh, and, and, um, but their life has been Mormonism, and uh, that's what they know. And so conversations that take place that challenge really the basis of their life Amen. is not something they don't want that, to hear that yeah that's just not something that nope. they're they really want to engage in a conversation now i have had conversations with my mom brief uh conversations that kind of scratch the surface um but it seems as though those are quickly remedied by uh, you know well, there's some things we just don't really understand and and yeah. you know we have to use faith to well did you become out. a little more integrated into the uh, uh Mormon liter or the anti, I guess you'd call it, the, the, the doctrines about the church and temples and masonry and some of the negative things that, over the years. Did you learn more about that and did you ever share that with your family? Well, I, I guess there was a point where um, I decided that, okay, I'm going to start looking into this stuff and forming my own opinions uh, and not taking the information that was given to me and just accepting that as, as fact or so truth. So you started studying a little yeah, bit. Yeah, uh, and, and I've, never been, uh, I've never been on this bandwagon of, of let's, you know, we're going to bash on the Mormons and, and, and you know, that's, that's never been, it's not a focus of mine. Yeah. My focus is how can I uh, have this walk with Jesus and, uh, you know, achieve my own spirituality. And uh, I think each individual has that walk that they need to find the path that they're on. And uh, it's, I think that once people find that, they know they found it. Yeah. And nobody can convince you otherwise. And, and that, like I said, that just happened for me, you know, you know, just within the last six months. Well, I want to explore that a little bit now. You kind of went through a 10, 20 year period of just yeah. kind of meandering, I guess you'd call it spiritually. Probably just, yeah. yeah, spiritually really not doing a whole lot of anything. Um, just, uh, you know, The church existing. didn't attract or didn't pull you back or anything. Yeah. So so tell us, you, you were kind of in a turmoil state and what happened? Yeah, I guess we just kind of got caught up in just, you know, kind of living our life and, and yeah. uh, raising our children and doing all of the, you know, things with school and, you know, yeah. just all of the other things yeah. that everybody does. Yeah. Uh, and I had been so, you know, I had been so inundated with religion and, you know, Mormonism specifically, because that's how, right. you know, the family I was born into, that I was... I was kind of over it. I was, you know, I was okay with not talking church all the time, yeah. every day anymore. Yeah. Uh, and and so for me, it was just easier just to say, hey, look, you guys go do all your church and religion stuff. That's fine. You know, I'll do me. Live my I mean, life. I'll be and, me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so and, so what happens? So you know, um, I guess as as I got older and uh, and. Um, you know, a little more water goes under the bridge, you start asking those important questions uh, that, you know, are really, you know, hey, you know, what's going on? What's yeah. this all about? What's, you know, 
really what is the the deal yeah um and uh i think that so something you know, happens though in december or so right? oh yeah yeah that, <laughs> uh, yeah um that was a time where i actually knew that the there was a god or there was a higher power at work in in my life um uh, what, kind of, what brought you to that point? What happened is, is it that, you know, we were going through, um, boy, the December, you know, the 2015 was really kind of a turmoil year uh, mm. for, for our family, just kind of personally with some challenges, you know, with, with health and, and with work and with, uh, you know, I mean, just a number of things. I mean, I, probably nothing, you know, more spectacular yeah. than any other family goes through. Uh, but uh, I never really even knew uh, if there was a God. I never really even had any idea. You know, I suspected that there's got to be something that's mm -hmm. greater than all of this. You know, it's the only thing that really logically makes sense is that there's a higher power at work. Yeah. But I never knew. Um, uh, and I always wondered, you know, what are these people... You know, these people that say, I know that, you know, either the church is true or I know that my faith in Christ is, is authentic and true. I never really, I, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm ever going to get that. Mm -hmm. And I never had it. I never yeah. had it for 47 years. Um, and I didn't know if I was ever going to have it. And so, um, you know, there, December 8th, um, for whatever reason, with all of these different <laughs> things happening in my life, um, uh, God made Himself present in my life, and uh, it wasn't a situation to where I was at the lowest common denominator of my existence. That was not it. it uh, but it, there were some challenges that I wasn't sure of how I was going to get through, yeah. and I wasn't sure how I was going to support my family through, and I wasn't sure how I was going to, um, you know, help you know, other members in my family. Right. Um, and uh, that day, it, uh, it, was, it, it was a very special day because it was a day that, that uh, I could tell everybody and there's not one person that I can't look at in the eyes and say, for me, I know that there's a God. And I know that, that uh, this higher power is at work in, in, in all of our lives. Now, whether you decide to go and check it out for yourself <laughs> and you want to, you know, yeah. have this same, you know, opportunity that I finally, I guess, probably stumbled into. Yeah. But. Um, well, what happened? What, what, what happened is, is that, uh, you know, I had all of these, uh, these feelings of, of, you know, just these emotional feelings uh, of, of, jubilation and and at the same time sorrow and uh excitement and fear uh and you know worry and doubt uh you know all of these things at the same time and uh it just you know i i kept trying to wrap my logical and my analytical mind around it and there was no explanation hmm. there was no explanation and literally the way the way that it <laughs> The way that it happened is I literally, I pulled up to the light. My daughter was with me during this experience, and I pulled up. We were traveling, you know, in the car. I pulled up to this light, and it was like just this huge blanket of, of calmness and peace and just literally relief. It was literally as if uh, at that point the hand of God was saying, it's okay. you're going to be okay. Did you I sense gotcha. Jesus in this? Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. this this spirit had, had finally, uh, I guess maybe it was I finally recognized, uh, uh, you know, that all of these things are, are happening, uh, you know, for a purpose uh, yeah. and, and by design. What is it? I don't know. But, yeah. but I do know that um, uh, I can say now that there is a God. And there is a higher power at work, and I have no doubt in my mind that that uh, is is the truth for me. Yeah. Now, now does Jesus then? Uh, do you understand His grace and and uh, the the fact that you've been you know, it's, saved it, by it, grace? Yeah, it's interesting because um, you know I think I'm still probably in my infancy of of spirituality well, just, along this path. Just happened. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, and so I. Um, 
you know, I, I study and I look and I understand and, and, and uh, I know that, that, um, that, you know, Jesus and, and God gave his son f for us, you know, so that paid we all, yeah, paid yeah. for our sins and so that, that we all could come down here and have an experience and, and know that, um, you know, we weren't down here alone. That, yeah. you know, hey, that we're being looked after and we don't necessarily understand everything that's happening and why and when and, and how could these things possibly be happening under the hand of God. Um, but what a confidence but, to have yeah, to know that God's there and that... Uh, uh, it's, um, it's interesting because it's, it's uh, for me personally, it's, uh, you know, it's just kind of this... It's kind of just a cape of, of, of security and understanding that, uh, you know, no matter how bad it gets, you know, <laughs> it's, it's going to be okay. And, well, has and, it given you a sense of peace in the sense of, of no, the less guilt or no guilt now? Yeah, I, I guess there was, um, in, in my own personal life, um, I had, a, you know, an experience when I was young where I was in an auto accident and, and I ended up, you know, you know, flatlining and dying. Oh, oh wow! You know, uh, part of my life By story. By the way, but, we've only got about two minutes yeah. left. So. But anyway, so <laughs> so I made it through this thing and uh, this accident and was okay. And the only explanation was is that it was the, you know a hand of God that there was a reason for me to be here. Well, my parents thought that it was for a mission, which and no didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. actually so I could marry my wife. I think. Yeah. I, I'm not sure, but I know that the hand of God is, plays a very vital role well, in my life. Well, two ch your children and uh, yeah, you know, two beautiful children that are. Just... And now you're sharing a story that I think it, it touches many people because there are a lot of. I know that there were a lot of young men and young women who came up into that 16, 17, 18 time frame, yeah. and they lost their testimony or mm -hmm. their way, and I'm sure they were a disappointment to their folks, Yeah. and yet uh, you found Christ, and uh, and that's brought a, uh, I'm putting words in your mouth, but a peace and a sense of, of confidence, at least, yeah. uh, that He loves you and has been watching out over you probably all yeah. these years. Yeah, I, I'd, never, I'd never had that, and I certainly never experienced this um, through Mormonism, obviously, but... Uh, but boy, I tell you, I was, I did have a conversation and said, okay, really 47 years, so we're going to wait this long, you know, yeah, um, but, now but, it's a, but now a personal relationship. Uh, it's, and, um, yeah. I mean, the only way I can describe it is it's a little piece of heaven. Well, Troy, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, I appreciate Earl. it. You're a, All right. a great young man. And, thank you uh, very much. And I appreciate you sharing your story with us. And remember, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files.